Hello, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. So you can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Now, as some of you may or may not know, I do live in Florida right now. South Florida, Miami. You'll soon see why I mentioned that, or you probably know by the title of this. Uh, don't forget, we also got the Patreon. Here's a, a light list. This is not accurate, all the things. Uh, there's more stuff. And we also got the Discord. Now, this is, how you say his name? Michael Macentry. This is his documentary on Miami. I'm curious. He is an English man. He does documentaries. So it's it fits. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into it. I've come to a place that's world famous for being a party town. But I'm going beyond the glitz and the glamour to try and uncover reports of a notorious underworld. All I do is kill. That's all I know how to do. Scared <laughs> mother notorious underworld. All I do is kill. That's all I know how to do. Apparently you know how to be a father as well. You got a kid. All right, let me just watch. Dude. Scared <laughs> mother this oh, it's McIntyre. Michael McIntyre. I don't know why that was so difficult for me to pronounce. McIntyre. This is a place where nearly half the males arrested have traces of cocaine in their system. 5,894 grams of cocaine. And some parts of town have seen a 40% rise in the murder rate. Are each of you prepared to kill? Prepared to kill. I'm in Ooh. Miami. <laughs> All the zoes out here, salute. <laughs> USA, one of the world's toughest towns. World's toughest towns. Miami, a picture postcard tourist destination, famed for its beaches and its nightlife, a mecca for entertainment, with a personality to match. Scratch the surface of Miami's glitz and glamour, and it reveals a much darker... I'm not gonna lie, everything they're showing right now, if you've never been to Miami, it looks exactly the same. Only thing that looks different from this, this, and now is the, the, the cars. Cars are better now. Everything else the same. Darker picture. Mm -hmm. You'll never have a club where nobody's uh, doing drugs. It's a fact. <laughs> it, it's not possible. Anyone that's looking for drugs in South Beach can find the drugs. <laughs> Facts. Over the last 18 months, there's been an upsurge in gang violence, giving Miami a higher murder rate than New York and L.A. I'm here to find out why. That is a spectacular sight. That's Miami. That's the Miami that we all know from Miami Vice. And you talk to the, the uh, old guard, the old cops who ran the beat then, and they say that uh, an awful lot of what you see here, the shiny buildings, the great con... Okay, the skyline is a little bit different than now. There's new buildings and those. An awful lot of that, more than anybody really wants to admit, um, was built on drug money. <laughs> I'm on my way to meet someone who knows all about how this city's drug trade operates. A man who single-handedly built an empire from the profits of cocaine. John Roberts was once one of the biggest importers of cocaine in American history. In the 1980s, he imported approximately $20 billion worth of drugs. Damn! Would it be true to say that a lot of the Miami that we see- Oh, this guy, okay. The glitz and the glamour, the tourist side of Miami, the beach was built on cocaine. I would say... And on, on, on 80, your business. 80 to 90 percent of it was built on cocaine. When I came down here, and I used to go to what's now called South Beach, 
There was nothing but lines of old people and rockers just sitting there waiting to die, you know what I mean, until God or whoever controls whatever it is, it's your turn to die, they'd die, and the next old person would get in the chair, and they'd rock back and forth. So this town was, it's fair to say, was built on cocaine. I, I would like somebody to, you know, argue the other side and tell me how else it was built, because there's no other way. There was no, there was no industry in Miami back then. You look back then, you didn't have what you have now. There was no industry. There was nothing back then. Miami was... Miami was the South. Miami wasn't far from Mississippi. You know, it was real, really. He's, he's spitting facts. That's why when you, when you, if you talk to Florida natives or Miami natives, they tell you, I'm not from Florida. I'm from Miami. I'm not from Florida. I'm from Broward County. They don't associate the rest of, they don't associate themselves with the rest of Florida. And I kind of get it from being here like a year, like it ain't the same. Miami and and Ivory Days is not the same. Like, it's just not. I mean, it's kind of the same, but let's. A better example is like Miami and Cent, my South Miami, 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 and Central Florida, not the same. <laughs> the Southern, Southern. It's actually pretty racist here. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Rednecks back then. You paint a picture of the lifestyle that um, this is Southern, Southern rednecks back then. See what I'm saying? Paint a picture of the lifestyle that um, this incredible, huge, incredible billion dollar business gave you. Mm -hmm. There was nothing you couldn't do or you couldn't buy. We used to eat in a restaurant called The Forge. What we had was our own room. I'd go in there with my friends. We'd get fucked up, excuse my English, drunk, destroy the room, throw drinks against the wall, have parties with girls on the table and under the table, destroy the place. They'd send me the bill the next day, they'd fix the room, and I'd come back a week later. We did it every week. But so it is what it is when you, got, when you got that much money. The good times and easy money didn't come without its fair share of extreme violence. Cocaine, everybody's nervous, everybody's uptight, everybody's looking at everybody strange. The people I was involved with, unfortunately, Rafa, he, he would take a mound of coke, he'd pile it on the table, and he'd have one of his guys empty the cigarettes out, and he would load it back. So this man was a paranoid schizophrenic. I mean, you could be sitting at dinner, and the table next to you would look at you, he'd decide to kill the whole table. And I'm not exaggerating, that's how paranoid the man was. And next yeah, at a certain point, when, when you empty a, a cigar out, cigarette out the tobacco out and refill it with a white substance class a and then you put a light to it that's a different drug now you do you're on a different level right now and you knew they'd be you'd be shooting everybody at the table next to you and you'd be going out the door you know what i mean you didn't know what was going to happen as cocaine became big business so did the violence as colombian drug dealers high on their own supply, shot each other up on the streets of the city. This was the era of the cocaine cowboys, and it made Miami the murder capital of America. Keep in mind, uh, YouTube, I am here for educational purposes. This is a documentary. I do not condone. I am not pushing an agenda. I am here learning, and I am here taking it in like anybody else. And given my life experiences. But in the 21st century, there are new rules of engagement in Miami's drug trade, turning parts of the town into a war zone. You take me here. You see this? You live by it, you're going to die by it. I don't need my child living and dying by this. I tell you what, you figure it out. After New York and LA, Miami is the most popular American tourist destination. Not bad for a city that arose from a swampy flatland a little more than a hundred. Okay, yeah, now this is looking real. I don't think this part of the skyline has changed much. I think that maybe there's a building right here now. Yeah, no, there's a few new buildings. Years ago. Definitely. Miami owes its very existence to the illicit trade in cocaine, a trade whose workforce has been fueled by the flow of immigrants into the city. In the past 50 years, wave after wave of migrants have flooded this city, all looking for an opportunity to flourish. 
In 1980, Fidel Castro tricked the U.S. into admitting hundreds of Cuba's most violent criminals. Hey, hey, listen. All that migrating, all, them, all of that. Hey, that's a lot of bad women here. Salute to that. <laughs> Before the authorities knew it was going on, Miami's crime rate soared. This was the era immortalized in the film Scarface. After the Cubans came the Jamaicans, who fought deadly battles with Cuban gangs for control of the city's drug market. The latest wave of migrants, the Haitians, Haitians. are now major players in Miami's drug trade. I'm with John Roberts, once the largest cocaine importer in American history. I'm interested in his views on Haiti's involvement with today's cocaine trade. It's rampant there now, it's rampant. Now there's murders because somebody looks the wrong way or something, you know, it's just stupid out there now. What's interesting is when the Haitians came over here, the black African-Americans, they hated them. That, you know, absolutely, uh, 100% correct. The Haitians became like what the Jamaicans used to be. Now the Haitians have taken over. Because their capacity for violence is, is greater much than anybody else's. Yes, and they have much more force. There's not that many Jamaicans here compared to Haitians. In numbers alone, they outnumber them. Facts. So that, that's why the Haitians have pushed them out. Like my friend, she just moved here from Chicago, or she lived in L.A. She moved here to, from Chicago to L.A. to here. She keep mistaking Haitians for Jamaicans out here, and I'm like, yo, there's not that many Jamaicans here. What you're seeing are Haitians. Those are not Jamaicans. <laughs> to the naked eye, you might be confused, but like I'm part Jamaican, and I got a lot of Haitian homies in Iraq, so it's like, them ain't Haitians. I mean, them ain't Jamaicans. Them is Haitians. Look a little closer. <laughs> In Miami's drug trade, John was a major player, but he wasn't selling the drugs on the street. That was left to the gangs to sort out, whose rule is the barrel of a gun. And the ones with the most guns right now and a willingness to use them are a Haitian gang known as the Zo Pound, which roughly translates as Haitian to the bone. Their notoriety has spanned nearly two decades. I've heard stories of extreme brutality, street executions, and voodoo rituals. They reside in the suburb, which has become known as Little Haiti, about a 10-minute drive from the tourist areas of South Beach. No, it's not. It's not 10 minutes. Don't let them lie to you. Even though most visitors to Miami wouldn't dream of going to... It's about 20, 25, maybe 30. 20 on no, with no traffic. This neighborhood, cocaine, has an inescapable presence in this city. It Little Haiti, where the good food is. Eight percent of all dollar bills Miami contain traces of cocaine, the highest in the entire country. I'm with the city of Miami police, and I'm with their gang unit, specialist gang unit. They're going to take me a tour of the city's gangland hotspots. They're also going to take me to Little Haiti, and they're giving me a little insight as to where Zopan fit in the matrix of gangland violence in this the city of exiles. What strikes me almost immediately is just within a few blocks, we leave the glitzy skyscrapers of downtown Miami and enter a whole different world. So what's crazy about Miami, because this is the South, you got to remember, as soon as you leave South Beach, even downtown Miami is not like your typical downtown, like, like you like downtown London or something. Like you like it's still a little bit different. It's sketchy. It's like downtown Miami is one of the downtown Miami and downtown LA, top two sketchiest downtowns that you'll ever touch foot in in America. In my opinion. Like big city wise, like it's, they're sketchy. Still daytime, but there's a palpable sense of tension on these streets. This is the kind of New York version of the projects around here. Yeah, this here, yeah, this is the project right here. A lot of narcotics, a lot of guns in this area, a lot of drive-by shootings up here. And we're right here in Little Haiti. What's the what's a weapon of choice among uh, the gangs here and the drug dealers? AKs. The AK-47, which the uh, street name for it here is a chopper. Yeah. That's one thing different about Chicago and Miami. They they use they got the big they, Miami got them big things. Out here. Miami got big guns. <laughs> We're on the outskirts of Little Haiti, and it feels like anything can happen at any moment. Oh, oh, oh. 
sure enough, two streets away, a drug dealer is about to have a surprise visit. I feel like it's still like this, but it's a little less. Like they 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 were in Miami at the time where it was real real crazy. It ain't like this. Like I don't know. It could be. I ain't I ain't involved in Miami's stuff like that. But both marijuana and cocaine. All that for weed, Chief. All this for a little bit of weed. See you right there, bro. Marijuana. These simultaneous incidents show that no matter how big or small the quantity, Miami police force has a zero tolerance when it comes to drugs. That's a lie. Now I'm okay. It wasn't probably wasn't a lie back then, but now, since the rules that uh, medicinal marijuana is legal in Miami, but like. The police are not bothering you if they see you smoking. They're not. You get 100%. Like, you can walk past a police officer with a blunt thing, almost, and they will not say nothing. <laughs> like, you got to be doing something, like, mad or wild. Like, they don't care. Like, they... When people talk to us about uh, Zopound, I got a sense that they were created, you know, from a, from different DNA, different ingredients to other gangs. The crimes they committed were, you know, heinous. They were really, really, really bad compared to the normal type of uh, crime we were used to seeing as far as the gang aspect goes of it. Was it the sense that when the Zopound started kind of organizing, was there a sense that they were quicker to pull the trigger? than anyone else. I mean, what was it about their crimes that set them apart? They're just letting you know they're ruthless. Yeah. You know, that that's that's their nature. Um, for what reason, I don't know, but, you know, they're just, they are, you know, a step above I mean, the, like, the other to individuals. Right, 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 right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Right. Patience is like that. <laughs> uh -huh. Don't get up. They're walking away, Kevin. They're going to run, Kevin. To me, these guys look like a bunch of kids hanging out after school, but I'm informed they are in fact affiliated to another local street gang, Prey Five. And the gang is hardened about to take any chances. Put your shit on camera. What's wrong with you, motherfucker? Fucking put your hands anywhere I can't see them again. The police inform me that this girl, Jennifer, was a target of a drive-by shooting only last week. So what happened? So did, was there a shooting? I was just shooting at us. Yeah, and why do you think they were shooting at you? I don't even know. Who would want to shoot at you guys? I don't know. She got to be like Colombian, Argentinian or something. No, punks. Yeah. Punks that don't got no lives. Are you guys at school? You at school? Yeah. Yeah, we go to school. Stay in school. Yeah, and what? And, uh, Cuban. And how old are you? For me? Yeah. 15. This is CCTV footage of Jennifer and the actual drive-by shooting. Even though the bullets went through the window of a local library, no one was injured. The police investigation revealed Jennifer was selling drugs on someone else's turf. In these parts of Miami, that's a crime punishable by death. What do you want to do? Who do you want to be when you grow up? Graphic designer. Graphic designer? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. I love drawing. Yeah. Yep. You know what's crazy? If she's still alive, she's probably really a graphic designer right now. I get in Miami, I ain't gonna get they get they get it like low key. Like I'm trying to say it as like as, as so a way y'all can understand it. Like they have there's an end goal some with some, a lot of them. Yeah, but I don't think I'm gonna make it there. Are the records I got? Too much friendly, sir. Oh, too you gotta remember, you're 15. Once they, in America, once you hit 18, that shit. <laughs> Drive bys, you're definitely not gonna make it. Man, I hope I end up getting killed one. Why? I like this world. This world getting too hard for me, for real. It's too rough out here. 
It's amazing. And one to one, you know, they're, they're just kids, you know. But, you know, you talk to the officers here and, you know, the records, the subject of drive by shootings, drug deals. And you think she could be Haitian, though. Haiti is on the same island as Puerto Rico, ain't it? Not Puerto Rico, I'm tweaking. Uh, Cuba. It's on the same island as one of, one of them, I forget, one of the Latin places. They're 15. What future do they have? Teenagers. Oh, Dominican Republic. It's on the same island as the Dominican Republic. So, you know. Like Jennifer are being sucked into gang life with little. Teenagers like Jennifer are being sucked into gang life with little prospects of ever getting out. It seems the gangs have a strong grip on the city. I'm on my way to meet one of Miami's top crime journalists, Frank Alvarado, to find out more about the influence of Zo Pound. The newest and deadliest to find out more about the influence of Zo, Zo Pound. You know it's crazy. A lot of these buildings are finished now, but they're trying to make it seem like this is like, oh shit, he's on Biscayne Avenue right now. My understanding is is that yeah, this is Biscayne Avenue. Frank Alvarado to find out more about the influence. This is the bus depot. I take this every every day when I got my daughter. This is the metro train. This is a free train that goes around the inner city of Miami, the inner downtown workings of Miami. Some Zo Pound. And this is like a, like a, I don't know exactly what this is, but it's like a theater or something, some big center or something. The newest and deadliest gang in the city. It's like Brickle. My understanding is, is that Zo Pound, in the wood. Um, like a lot, some of the other gangs, they started really coming over like after 92, after the military coup in Haiti, forced the max exodus of Haitians over, you know, here to Miami. And I guess shortly after like they arrived here, Zopound, through fear and intimidation, they were just taking over the streets of Little Haiti. And it's not unusual you know, when, when the police show up to a homicide scene to find 50 casings on the floor because they're, the modus operandi behind Zopound is to, you know, empty their guns. Everybody that's in the car has to empty their guns. Frank has an idea about a possible route into the Zo Pound through an ex-gang member <coughs> called Bulldog. Bulldog has made a name for himself in Miami after appearing in a number of low-budget feature films. Ah, yes. Here's our boy. Bulldog. He'll get you the Zo Pound for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Presenting to you from around the world. The ghetto president. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed, but now, like, people don't really shoot movies in Miami anymore or Florida because there's no tax breaks. Like, like New York, Cali, like, you get tax breaks. So, say you're shooting a movie and the budget is a million dollars, you would only get, you because of the tax breaks, you would only be paying, like, 750000 or half a million. That, ain't, that don't exist in Miami no more. So, if you come to Miami and you're shooting... You paying the full price. <laughs> Bulldog has agreed to meet me, but there's a catch. He wants to do it in the heart of Little Haiti, and I've been told to come alone. Here the streets are run by numerous Haitian gangs, the Zo Pound being the most feared and dominant. This area is rife with unemployment and the perfect place for gang culture to flourish. It's disconcerting to think that I'm only 10 minutes away from the affluent tourist strip of South Beach. No, you're, hey, I don't know if he knew, but he's, that's not a 10 minute drive. <laughs> I guess maybe with no, no, not even with no traffic. That's not 10 minutes. <laughs> the Chef Creole restaurant is a focal point for the community here, serving traditional Haitian food. Bulldog, yeah. Mac, everyone calls it, it's Donald. Everyone calls him Mac. How you doing? All right, Mac. How you doing? Hi, Mac. Kila. Kila, how you doing? Yes. Hey. How you doing, man? 
Hey, hey, so good it's to our see introduction you. on camera. Huh? Yeah, well, you know. It's all good. Hey, you, you know, you're my passport, you know, to this world. Yeah, I'm like the ghetto president, they call me, you know? I was real wild in the streets, you know, bullet holes everywhere. Yeah. Where? Here, here. Went in here, come out back there. I, I was under my legs, I was paralyzed for six months. Yeah, Whoa. the guys were shooting at you. How are they doing? Are they still alive? They're not doing that good, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, without incriminating yourself, you know, are they breathing oxygen or are they... Mr. McIntyre, what do you mean, without incriminating yourself, are they breathing oxygen? That's incriminating this bulldog, don't you do it. Are they you taking know, nitrogen? Yeah, what are they I doing? It's a long time ago, though, you know? Way to dodge, way to duck and dodge, All my boy. got dealt with. You have to earn your respect on these streets. Well, that's, um, that's a bulldog, and, uh, you know... Let's see whether he kind of opens the door for us into this whole world of uh, Zopan. Yo, Blind, it's Bulldog, man. I got a film crew here, man, from UK. I'm trying to bring him to Zopan, man. I need you to open some doors for me to get to the Zopan. All right? So I'm going to meet you a little bit, and then we'll do some introductions from there, all right? I want you to bring, you know, um... Bulldog tells me to follow him to an undisclosed location. Road's blocked by the police car up here. But that guy more or less said, I'm a killer. And this story about Zopan is more uh, complex than the amount of bodies and the amount of drugs that shifted over the years. I hope this gang will give me an insight into how the city's drug economy works. Hardly driving, or more prowling. And uh, he's waving at people he knows and he's making his presence felt. You gotta remember, man, when you're in the hood, it's a certain way you gotta drive, man. I don't know if a lot of people know that, man. But when you're cutting down these one-way streets, and these little streets where all the neighborhoods is, you gotta, you gotta be moving. You got it's a certain speed at which you can't drive overly fast. You can't drive super slow. Now because he's known, he can do that. He can ride around like the president. But if you're a civilian, you gotta you better go the speed limit, the exact number on the speed limit. You better go that fast. <laughs> and um, his presence means that our presence isn't a threat to anybody. So that man's our passport, and also mm. he's our safety net. Too slow means possible drive-by. Too fast means you're not trying to. You're not really supposed to be there. You scouting. Quick drive-through. In a quiet back street in Little Haiti, we wait. Some members of the Zoe Pound will come and find us. What are they doing? You already know. Just blind. Suddenly, the Zoe Pound appear almost out of nowhere and they keep coming. I hadn't expected to see them in such numbers. These guys have earned their reputation as one of Miami's most violent gangs by using deadly force to control this neighborhood. Prime real estate for lucrative drug dealing. I was soon about to see for myself why this gang is so feared. Why would you want to torture me? Color your eyes. Yeah. I don't like the way you look. I might yeah. not like the way you smell today. Yeah. I'm just an angry motherfucker. I'm in Miami investigating the deadly drugs trade, a black market economy that has helped to build this city into a glamorous world destination. The bro just say, I don't like the color of your eyes. I've gone to Little Haiti only a 10 minute drive north from Miami's iconic beaches. But here, the city has a very different feel. My contact bulldog has brought me face to face with Zoe Pound. The latest in a long line of immigrants who have arrived in the city chasing the American dream through violence. So do the, do the police come around by here all the time looking for you guys? They're giving you guys a hassle? Yeah, they come over here trying to hassle us, period, point blank. This is the hood, man. They fuck with us every day, man. 
I've been getting checked all day. Yes. Where is the money to be made? Is it dealing inside the community with the crackheads, the Hispanics, doing with the Jamaica? Uh -oh. Business is being conducted on all levels, all types of people of all walks of life. Business is business. So when I say business is business, for all the people that understand that, you understand business is business. Evidence of recent drive-bys are apparent when some gang members patrolling the area arrive. ZP for life, sir. That's real? That's real now, sir. Pull it home. <laughs> Is that real? No, just forge some metal through the through the pillar of my car. Not too real. Oh, sir. Top of bullets, sir. ZP, baby. AK-47, live, sir. Yeah. The hot boy. Go ahead and let the people know what has to happen sometimes. Uh, around here, man, you can easily get click clack. Ain't no coming back from that. Now, you've, you've been in the war. Uh, you don't mind me asking about the scars there. Well, this happened before I got with the family. This happened when I was young. I don't want my son being 15 to have to endure what I endure. This here. I was in a wheelchair. My mom cried days and nights. And I had to witness my homeboy's mama crying by never ever seeing their children again. So I wouldn't want that for mine. You take me here. You see this here? You live by it, you're going to die by it. I don't need my child living and dying by this. You feel me? Plain and simple. You live by it, you're going to die by it. I don't need my child living and dying by that. That's a choice I made. And trust me, that's a choice sometimes I go to bed with, can't sleep about sometimes because I got a conscience like any other man has a conscience. With the evolution of Zopan ain't gonna be what it started off. We started off as gangsters, but we ain't gonna end up as gangsters. But at the same time, no crosses, because you will get fucked up. I did, Mac. I'm introduced to another gang member who has turned up with his son. And what's Zopan about? Killing pussies. Yeah. All I do is kill. That's all I know how to do. Eat, sleep, shit, and kill. Really? Simple. I do what I do best. And is that, is that you, obviously for business? And you're not just doing it for kicks. For pleasure. You're not doing it for just for pleasure. For pleasure. This is for pleasure. Do I believe that? I take pleasure in the torturing motherfuckers. Really? Yes, I would take pleasure in getting it out right now and torturing you if I could. Why, why would you want to torture me? That is not funny, but it is funny. Mail today. How many do you think you've you've uh, taken down over the years? If you don't mind me asking. I lost count. By the time I turned 21, I lost count. Personally, I like to use my knife. I like to be personal with it. It's not. It's nothing more. It's nothing more exciting than watching the person take their last breath. You know, the look in their eyes when they realize their life is over. And this is your son here, is this it? This is my son. And you don't mind to hear him? Does he know about your lifestyle? He know what I do. And, and what do you want for him? Would you mind if he followed in your footsteps or do you want something different for him? I prefer a better life for him. That's yeah. what I do what I do. So he can have a better life. Yeah. I feel if I exterminate enough of you pussies out there, by the time he grow up, he wouldn't have no problems. Yeah. I'm just an angry motherfucker. Angry. Well, uh, there's, there's, there's avenues where you can get help. There's counselors. There's AA meetings for murderers. Like, come on now. Well, it's hard to get a sense that uh, uh, Zo Pound is just a gang or a Rough. drug dealing business. It seems to have a, a huge amount of support right across the community here in Little Haiti. You know, and here these are, you know, uh, some of the senior figures in the community, you know. And one of the guys just showed me blind, showed me a gun, and that's five to 10 years. And I think they're pretty open about their street activities, which is about drugs and everything associated with that, that's murder. It was five or 10 years back then. July 1st, <laughs> anybody can carry a gun in Florida. No license, no training, no nothing. As long as you're not a convicted felon or something. Just killings and uh, revenge and retribution. Do you know what? Some of them are scary fucking motherfuckers. I noticed a t-shirt being worn proudly by a gang member and I was about to find out who's pulling the strings. 
You gonna tell me who this is? Makazoo. This man Klo. Yeah. Makazoo. This is a top man, isn't it? Yeah, a good man. Yeah. You know. And where is he now? The lockdown. Lockdown, yeah. In jail. I'm told Makazo, the gang's leader, has been charged with four counts of murder. I don't know why I thought that E at the end of Zo was uh oh. Makazo. To understand what makes this gang so ruthless on the streets of Miami, it's important to understand where they've come from. These are the streets of Haiti's capital, Port au Prince, one of the most dangerous places on earth. This is where the Zo Pound were forged. Ever since the Haitians freed themselves from slavery and gained their independence over 200 years ago, the country has been in a constant state of chaos and violent unrest. In September 1991, thousands of Haitians were killed in... So like it ain't getting no better right now. ...vicious street battles after the country's newly elected president was overthrown. It was a ferocious and bloody coup, causing a mass exodus of refugees seeking asylum in the US. They were not welcome. Those that did get into the country bound together and settled in what was to become known as Little Haiti. Blind has decided he wants to show me a different side of Haitian culture, away from the gangs. He wants to take me to meet his mother-in-law, a voodoo priest. Oh my God, Lucy would be in love. Lucy, they probably invite you with open arms to... to, to the to, Miami 54th Street is the, like the first place you come to in Miami, if you hate Little Haiti 54th Street. Uh, 54th Street every day. Booty is in, in, embedded in Haitian culture. I don't practice it, but it's part of my culture, man. Looking around, it seems that voodoo and Christianity have merged to become one religion. How important is it here, you know, that it's the voodoo, a the voodoo. It's very important to us, especially the Haitian people. And what does it mean? Is it kind of the spirit within the, the Haitian community is it's voodoo? It's right? very strong. Now you're you're a voodoo priestess. Would that be yes. sure enough? Okay. Now that's just it seems to me you must carry a lot of stress because if you're trying to take a lot of pain from other people, that's it's right. got to go somewhere. They're go not me. I do not take it. My spirit take it. My spirit do the work, not me. Because I, if there was for me, how you think I could do a work like that? I have to call my spirit first to do the work. So what can you do? You can heal, you can nurture, can you? Me, I do everything. Only thing I don't do, I do not kill people. Okay. And Anybody who's sick, they're welcome. So if we want to get a voodoo blessing, a sense from you, you can... Do it for you? Do it for me. Yes. It's nothing bad on it, you see? You could smell it. It's very strong, but it's good. It's obviously been decided that everyone could do with a good look top up, and I can see why. When you live on the mean streets of Little Haiti, you're going to need all the luck you can get. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? My 86 dollar voodoo good luck charm. The uh, spell has been cast, but you know what? It's um, I do feel. I ain't even gonna lie. McIntyre, Mike McIntyre, you deep in there. <laughs> you deep in there. Danny Dyer ain't got nothing on you, my boy. You deep in here. <laughs> Real or imaginary, in my head or in the spirit world, I don't know, it makes me feel good. For a moment, I have to remind myself that I'm still in Miami. Back amongst the tourists in South Beach, it's hard to imagine that the Zoe Pound are only 10 minutes up the road. But this short journey makes me think that there are two cities within Miami, and I wanted to understand how the two worlds came together. 
were visitors to Miami inadvertently mixing with gangs like Zo Pound by looking at mangoes still there looking for a good time amongst the bars and clubs of South Beach. Miami Beach is, a, is an interesting place because you'll see a little bit of everything um, from the street level stuff to the, the high end nightclub, you know, designer party drugs. You'll never have a club where nobody's uh, doing drugs. It, it's not possible. You'll have some dope peddlers that'll come over, they'll take the bus or they'll drive over from some of the areas on the mainland like Little Haiti and they'll, they'll end up here and they'll sell their marijuana and their cocaine and stuff, uh, uh, street level sales to people here in South Beach. I think that's the whole reason a lot of these clubs exist is because of coke and meth. That's the drug people are gonna be on and they're gonna be awake and they wanna party. Because of the recent rise in fentanyl, I wouldn't say this is that accurate anymore. I mean, it's still accurate to a certain extent, but like... Shrooms are popular here. Bulldog's been in contact. He tells me the gang are keen to show me what life is like when they're selling drugs on the street. They insist I must meet them tonight. My rendezvous is outside an unlikely English pub in the middle of Little Haiti called Churchill's. <laughs> and to my surprise, I find an unexpected friendly face in the form of the local door. You a lie. Ain't no way this bar is over here. Churchill, church, hold on, wait, 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 let me open a new window, because I'm, oh yeah, okay, church here, church here, bar, Miami, <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh wow, this thing's still here. Oh my guys, I never go here. <laughs> what the Yo That's wild. Poor man. Hey, you don't mind me saying it's a bit bizarre to hear an English accent in the middle of kind of little Haiti. When I first started, the first six months, yeah, I'll be honest, I was scared as shit. I'd be sitting here like this, cars would pull up with tinted windows, and I'd be thinking about it, like, God, you know, they could roll a window and Because down. we've been with some of the Zopan lot, and yeah. let me tell you, they're packing. Yeah. But, I, no, mean, I, 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 I mean, they're carrying, right? Was, every now and again, like I said, it will go off wherever it's just a shooting, shots fired. A lot of it is what I call territory. We have a nice car park here, they're trying to muscle in on the car park, charging the people a dollar or two. I live in the hood. I live just a few blocks up the street. Hey. Even when I drive home, even though I know people know me, I'm always, like, I've got my key ready to go in my gate. Once I'm in my gate, I feel safe, but I'm always alert. Chris's views on Little Haiti only reinforce the sense of this tension is a second I feel in this what? neighborhood. The double deckers, I, I might pop up, low key. Until I get the call I've been waiting for and dragged to the back streets of Little Haiti. It's their part of the hood. It's their part of the world. And I don't know what's going to go on. But they're keen to bring us to a house, I think, across there. And they're having a big meeting. Uh, I think they're keen just to say that their talk has not been cheap and that they are the real deal. You know, I mean, the casualties on these streets tell us they're the real deal. But I'm still shocked that there's a UK, there's a British pub in the middle of Little Haiti. Is no one else as shocked as me? The rest of the drug dealers and ex-drug dealers in this town tell us they're the real deal and they're keen to let us know. But what we're going to see and what's going to happen, I don't know. Bulldog appears. I don't want to put you all in there, okay? I'm into the Bulldog's not comfortable with the situation. He doesn't think it's safe for us to go inside. But this is what I've come for and I'm not keen to turn back now. Hey, Mason, hey, McIntyre, 
whatever his name is, Mason Tree or McIntyre. He is really out here thugging. Hi, buddy. Huh? No one's going to be seen. We're not going to show any faces. There has been a change no of mind. They don't want us to enter. Bulldog seems tense as we return to the car. But out of the darkness, J-Dog, a gang member I'd met earlier in the day, approaches. He has some new instructions to take me to an unknown destination. While we're traveling, J-Dog wanted a free ride. That's what he wanted. <laughs> I take the opportunity to ask him about the Zoe Pound's leader, Makazo. You know, what makes him so special? I mean, he's just a guy that just don't give a fuck. Um, he's 100% G-Code. Chica, what's that mean? Gangster. Gangster. Yeah. You know, I mean, all the boys 100% gangster. There is, you know, there's no flawed, flawed niggas in our camp, I can say. You know, because everybody keep it gangster and keep it 100, 100% gangster all day, every day. And does that mean sticking together and having no fear? Sticking together, having no fear, getting money. I mean, all around the board. What makes what makes you gangster is what you do and how you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? So. Side note, is there any Rose Kemp? that I have not done. Like I know we just covered the, the, the Millennium Dome Heist Rose Kemp one. Like is there anything else that I, like I would, we could watch that right now too. Magazo, he's doing his time <gasps> and you know, with no pressure on his back, he's just doing it, you know. I'm not sure what kind of place I've been brought to. Even Bulldog is on edge. I overhear one of the gang members talking on the phone to Makazo. Whatever they have planned, it seems it has to be run past their leader for him to endorse from his own prison cell. Some of the Zopan foot soldiers have agreed to meet with me. A quick glance tells me these guys are different from the other gang members I've met so far. These are the guys that sell dope directly onto the streets and have to protect their patch with the barrel of a gun. But needless to say, they wouldn't tell me any details of that evening's operation. So guys, Zopan, what's Candy it mean to you? Glock. Is it a political movement or is it just a family? I mean, tell me what it means to you. 360, good, good answer. So what does it mean to you, for you, Zopan, you know? What it means to me? Yeah. Means life. Without Zopan, would it would have be? been no name for Nobody, nobody in my head, but for the Zopas at all. For you, Zopan. It brought unity for us. It was, a, it was a time where Haitians couldn't even walk these streets. You feel me? For you to walk these streets, you have to have balls and you have to represent where you're from. Without representing where you're from, you ain't shit. You feel me? So we had to come up with a click. You know what I'm saying? They came up with a click, Zopal. A couple of areas, we had to go in and do what we do. You feel me? Because without respect, you ain't shit. You feel me? And I hear a lot of people say, hey, you know, respect don't make a man and this and that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I tell you what, you figure it out. Without Zopal, you feel me? Yeah. I mean, it's like that. You feel what I'm saying? So, if you carry a gun, it seems to me in this neighborhood you have to either kill or be prepared to kill. Be prepared to kill. Okay, is that true? If you carry a gun in this town, on this block, you have to be prepared to kill. Prepared to kill. Are each of you prepared to kill? Prepared to kill. Yeah. Have any of you killed? Are you gonna say? Hey, Mac. Hey, Mac. Chill. But but you have if you're on the block with a gun, you gotta be prepared to kill. Yeah. yeah. All day. Just as suddenly as they made their appearance, I'm told my time is up and I have to leave. You got up out of there like no problem. I'm gone. I just come out of the meeting with the uh, guys, AK 47s, the Glock. You know, these are guys who. Shotgun. I mean, it's probably, you know, I'm, uh, it's not an hysterical assumption on my behalf. You know, you know <coughs> he does go. He's back on Biscayne. Glock, you know. Just come out. You know what's crazy is Biscayne looks exactly the same. This the gas station, the, still the, there. Uh, guys, AK 47s. This Taco Bell now, he's about to cross the street. You know, these are guys who. Still there. Oh, this is not here. This is Pizza Hut. This is gone. I'm killed. I'm oh, yes, it is. No, the Taco Bell is still there. I mean, it's probably, you know, I'm, uh, it's not an hysteric. McDonald's still there. On my behalf. You know, you know, 
very likely those guys have, you know, body bagged, you know, four or five people. Maybe well, much no more. Still there. And there, it feels all cartoon. It feels like a performance art, and you know, I feel because I've seen so much of that in in the movies. I'm thinking I'm seeing another part of a movie set. It's fucking real. They were there tonight. That performance was put on on the orders by Macazo, and he's the main man. He's a serpent's head who's locked up. To try and really understand Miami and how a gang like Zoe Pound works, I need to get access to Makazo inside his prison cell. But he's serving a double life sentence for murder, so this isn't going to be easy. Miami, a city built on the profits of cocaine and propelled by a constantly shifting underclass of immigrants, all seeking their own slice of the American dream. For many in this underclass, crime and gangs offer the fastest way out of the ghetto. The real heyday of crime in the city was um, in the 80s, when these tourist areas around here were practically no-go areas. Now the police clamped down and moved the crime, and, uh, and they dispersed the criminals and the muggers and the drug dealing from this tourist area, and it just moved it back into the inner city. The crime hasn't gone away, it's just relocated. I'm here investigating. That's common. It's called gentrification. Muggers <laughs> and the drug dealing from this tourist area, and it just moved it back into the inner city. The yeah. crime hasn't gone away, it's just relocated. I'm here investigating the latest immigrant gang to have stamped its mark on the city a deadly Haitian gang known as the Zopand. I've learned that they're major players on the distribution side of the drug trade in this city. Last night, I met with some of their foot soldiers, the guys that work the streets and protect their turf. I'm now about to meet their leader, Makazo. Makazo is currently serving a life sentence for four counts of attempted murder and two counts for conspiracy to commit murder. He's appealing these convictions. He got double life for four? Okay, okay, well, okay. <laughs> Let me calm down. Let me reiterate. But double life for conspiracy and for two counts of conspiracy and four counts of attempted? Double life seems, I don't know. Like, I, it, it sounds fitting, but it also sounds a little excessive at the same time. I don't know, I could be wrong. I could be tweaking, I don't know. This is uh, Dade County Prison. This is the pretrial detention unit. And we're about to meet Makazo, the head of Zo Pound. Now, we know last night when they put on a show of for force for us that Makazo had arranged that entire um, event here uh, in prison. And we're about to meet his lawyer and himself. It's going to be very sensitive because he's facing some serious charges. Makazo has already spent the last six years behind bars. I've been granted an interview on the condition that I meet him in the presence of his lawyer. Hi, uh, Mac, how you doing? Mac, too. How you doing? Yeah, I'm very well, Mac. Obviously, his lawyer doesn't want Makazo to say anything that would endanger his appeal. As you know, we're over doing a um, uh, story about Zopan. First of all, how, how, how's jail? Jail is all. I mean, what you know? Hanging in there. Yeah. It's hell, but you know. Yeah. What does Zopan stand for you? For me. This this meeting is gonna be over really quick. I mean pride thing to be proud of movement, a cause, you know. That's what we fought for. I mean, I know you got, you know, a lot of things, negative things that they say about Zopan and, and for me to sit here and you know, like I'm a saint or an angel. You know, I'd be fooling myself and fooling y'all, which I'm not, but I mean, I had my little run-ins or whatever. And, but mainly the movement was more for a cause, fighting for our people and, and, and just standing for them, you know, just wanting to see them be proud of who they are, you know. But growing up on the streets, what you had to go through, it, it surprises me that so many of your characters are still alive because it's, sometimes it's a dangerous place there. Yeah, it's a rough life, you know. Wouldn't wish this life on no one. With his appeal looming, I understand that Makazo has to be on his best behavior. 
but it's difficult for me to marry the man I've just met to the ruthless gangster the police believe he is. He asked two questions. <laughs> Before I leave Miami, I head back to Little Haiti to meet Bulldog. I ask him to fill in the blanks for me. Uh, now, on the subject of Makazo, he's at the top of the tree, he's a god, OG, original gangster. He's in for three attempted murders and any number so of misdemeanors, so they say, right? But anybody who gets it, the, what I hear on the streets, that guy. It's not to be fucked with. Not to be fucked with, of course. He's a, he's a, he's a, nobody gets the top of a tree like that unless there's a long body count to his name. Lots of but the notches on your gun. But to be realistic, to, to, to be realistic with you, ain't too many fucking people running these streets that don't have a lot of body counts. Macazo is a living legend out here. If it wasn't for Macazo and his generation, man, this Haitian community still be running around here getting kicked in their ass. It's, it's bad being black and poor in America, but being black, Haitian, and poor, there's nothing worse than that, man. For some, the only way to Miami's riches is through the illicit drug. Haitians got good food too, man. You should have tried some food from them while you was here. I ain't even gonna lie. Trade. The Haitians are the latest arrivals, and it's their struggle for a market share that's given rise to the murder rate. It's a dangerous world, and the ones at the bottom, the foot soldiers, often pay the ultimate price. When opportunities are sparse, many feel they have no alternative. Uh, around here, man, you can easily get click clack. Ain't no coming back from that. He ain't lying. Ain't no coming back from the click clack. I came to Miami to investigate why this town has such a spiraling murder rate. But I can't help feeling that Miami's skyline stands testament to the fact that crime does sometimes pay. In this city of exiles, that message does not go unnoticed as everyone looks for a fast track out of the ghetto. This is the gang culture mentality in the USA, and it's not about to change anytime soon. Yeah, it's funny that he says, like, if he looks at the skyline, it, it, money, crime does pay. But look at all the people that are committing the crime. Look where they at. <laughs> well, the little foot soldiers that's doing all the work. They in the ghetto. T D His name is Donald. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your posts, man. Interesting stuff, man. Especially since I'm here. I'm gone.